So now let's talk about how we're going to measure music. So in general, when we have a physical object, let's say this piece of paper or this pen, we can use a ruler to measure the length of the paper. Maybe we use inches, maybe we use centimeters, it doesn't matter. The inch or the centimeter is just a unit of measuring distance. So we have a set value or we have a set, um, let's say a space for how far apart an inch is or how far apart a centimeter is. And all we do is just add them together to get a total distance. So let's say we have one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, etc. I think a normal piece of paper is eight and a half inches, right? So it's really easy to see how we can measure distance on a physical object. But how do we measure lengths of time when it comes to music? Well, it turns out that we actually have something called a measure. And a measure is how we're going to measure the length of time in music. Now, when I say length of time, that's a little bit misleading because we don't actually measure the time itself. We measure the musical time. And let me explain what I mean. We don't measure in terms of seconds or minutes. So we're not going to, let's say we're going to play a song, we're not going to play an A chord for, you know, 10 seconds and then move on to a B chord. It doesn't work that way. We actually measure the length of music in terms of the beats, like we already talked about, about the beats. So think about this. If you have an inch, if you have um, a unit of measure, let's say an inch is about this far apart. In distance, uh, we can divide an inch up into four quarters. So let's say we have half an inch is right here, and then maybe one quarter of an inch is right there, and then maybe three quarters of an inch is right there. So now we have four quarters. One, two, three, and then four. I uh, just drew these little stairs just to show you the divisions of the actual inch itself. So similar to an inch where we have four quarters, um, we can actually divide up our beats in music with something called a measure. And for right now, I'm going to draw these little bars. And for right now, we're going to have four beats per measure. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to draw another line right here. So really, these lines should extend a little bit past the beats. The beats should be in the middle of the bars. OK, so now I have this division line. This division line doesn't really tell us anything other than this is the beginning of this measure. So this piece here is called a measure. This is just one unit of music. And remember, we don't measure music in terms of time. We measure music in terms of beats. So how many beats have gone by? If you remember from the last lesson when we talked about tempo, you know that we can stretch these beats out across the page. So maybe our beats are something like this. Maybe they're this far apart. Well, how many beats for right now, how many beats do we have per measure? I said we have four. So if this is four beats, one, two, three, four, and this is four beats, well, aren't they supposed to be the same distance? And the answer is that no, they're not, because we aren't measuring distance like we do in inches. All we're doing is measuring the number of beats. So we have four beats here, which makes one measure. We have four beats here, which makes one measure. So what's the difference between these two measures? The difference is, you notice how um, this, these beats are closer together. So if I start at the beginning and I push my play button, these beats might sound like this. Boom, 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 boom. If I start on this measure and push my play button, these beats might sound like this. Boom, 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 boom. Notice how the second measure feels a lot slower. And notice how the first measure feels a lot faster. In other words, in the second example, our tempo is slower. Remember, tempo means speed of the beat, or more precisely, the speed in which we encounter the beats, because time always moves at the same rate. 
So we're going to encounter these beats on the second measure more slowly than we're going to encounter the beats on the top measure right here. So let's add more measures to our first line with all of these beats. If I said there's going to be four beats per measure, we have one, two, three, four. That gives us one measure. Well, if we count four more beats, one, two, three, four, that gives us another measure. Now we have two measures of music. Or in other words, we have four beats in the first measure. We have four beats in the second measure, which gives us eight total beats of music. If I wanted a third measure, I would obviously need to add two more beats. And I think I'm out of space on the page to, to make the beats um, the same distance apart, but I think you get the idea. So we would have a third measure right there, um, my really lovely straight line that's supposed to be a straight line. But anyway, the point is we have three measures now. Here's one measure, here's a second measure, here's a third measure. Now this, start might, this might start looking familiar to you because it might start looking like sheet music or it might start looking like music that you've seen before. Because we've divided these beats up into measures, we can now say, let's play the A chord for two measures and then let's change to the B chord. That's how we know how long to play a certain piece of music before we move on to the next piece. Whether that's a chord or some lead guitar or a solo or even a new song, measures are how the entire band stays on beat together and how they know when to change um, chords or parts or, or songs or whatever it is all at the same time.